Chokra Lodge, situated bang in the middle of Nepal, is an 18-room regenerative tourism lodge, and I'll talk a little more about that in the presentation. Opened by Sir Edmund Hillary in 1998, and 85% of our staff who were at the opening are still with us. So it's, it's, it's a lovely, it's become a real family affair, really lovely. Our focus is on walks as opposed to treks, day hikes, you could say, um, and also post-trek R&R &R or wellness um, for those who've been trekking in the higher mountains and want to come down to lower altitudes and have a more relaxed time. We integrate very well with Tiger Tops, obviously, our sister company, with other trekking organizations, such as the lovely Curandani Lodges going up into the Annapurna um, sanctuary area, with classic camping treks in remote areas and the old Sherpa camping system, with the wonderful new, newly opened uh, Moksha Mustang up in Jomsom, the, the, probably the smartest hotel in Nepal at the moment, certainly outside Kathmandu. Um, so, so we integrate well, form a great hub. And Nepal also is a great South Asia hub because from Kathmandu, you can head back to India, you can head sort of to the west to Delhi, you can go up to Ladakh in the northwest Himalaya, you can fly down from Kathmandu to Badrapur Airport right on the southeast corner of Nepal on the border, and it's a two-hour drive then to Darjeeling or a four or five-hour drive on to, on to Bhutan. Or you can go to um, Bagdogar Airport, about an hour and a half's drive from the border, and, and fly down to Calcutta. So wonderful integration within the wider South Asia jewels of tourism, such diversity as, as you could hardly believe. As our lodge, we're, we're very proud members of, of two important regional associations here, Rare India, which is an affiliation very much looking at conscious luxury travel within South Asia, and Secret Retreats, which is, is a organization of small owner-occupied non-chain lodges throughout Asia. So, so we have a foot in the sort of the region and the greater region. Um, Deepesh, if you're ready, I'm ready on that note to, yeah, to sure. go uh, into yeah. the presentation. Yeah. Lovely. Great. So here, here we start. This is actually the view from the lodge. You can see on the left, Annapurna South. Um, in the middle is Hyun Chuli, and then just to the right with the cloud blowing off it to the right is Annapurna 1, the first 8,000 meter peak to be climbed by Maurice Herzog in the 1950s. This is uh, the entrance to the lodge, and we are the embodiment of conscious luxury travel. What do we mean by this? Conscious luxury travel is designed not to look at the luxury of gold-plated taps, obviously, but that consciousness of luxury, which is the luxury of an experience, meeting people from another culture, an authentic local meal in a local setting, all those sort of things, the more sensitive, you know, that walking barefoot on a beach as the sun sets, that sort of luxury. Luxury that engages us with the world, with the natural world, with the peoples of the world. I think that's it. Um, Deepesh, are you going to do slides or shall I? Uh, can you see my the slides? Uh, I, I can. I, 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 what I, let me just see. Uh, no, you have to do it. If you go to slideshow. Yeah. And then just go play from the beginning. And now, yes, now go from there. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, is this okay? Ah, uh, perfect. Lovely, lovely. So let, let me know when you want to uh, forward the slide. I, I'll let you know, absolutely. Okay. Um, so the main international gateway to Nepal is Kathmandu, as I guess most people know. Sandwiched between Nepal and India, uh, between Tibet in China and India, the country is, has three layers. The upper half, upper third of the country is the high mountains. In the middle, drawing a line through Kathmandu, Pokhara, east to west, you, you have the middle hills. And then down in the, the bottom third is the plains known as the Tarai, 
Um, so we move from literally 150 meters above sea level down in the plains up to Mount Everest, Sagamatha at 8,800 and, and however many extra meters as that is still to be finally announced, the newest height. Um, the highest point on earth, sometimes called the third pole. It is interesting and, and the, the, we're talking that north-south is on average 100, 120 miles. So it's an amazing gradient. Tiger Mountain, you can see the arrow pointing down. Tiger Mountain is just outside Pokhara, about a 40 minute drive. And we are in the middle of Nepal, obviously geographically, but culturally, as I mentioned in my introduction, between Tiger Tops in the Southern Plains with wildlife and conservation focus and mountain travel in the high mountains with the, the hill walking and mountaineering focus. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, this is just a very short video, just a couple of minutes. Um, can you play the video, Deepesh? And stop if it doesn't work. Sometimes it, it doesn't stream well. So if it doesn't, or if people say it's not working, we'll, we'll ignore it. Um, it doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, it's coming blank. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Cancel that. We would just bin that. Sorry, yeah, it works. Yeah, I think it works now. Okay, give me one second. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. So it's just a, a brief view of the lodge, as you see, situated in the middle hills of Nepal. Wonderful community forest all around. And this is our main lodge on the hilltop breakfast being served by one of our stewards, Ganesh. We focus very much on, on everything local, as much as possible organic. That's Narbada, one of our cooks, um, collecting from our neighbor, Sukhmaya, a healthy bunch of coriander. Coriander is a key element of Nepali cuisine. This is the view from one of the bedrooms. Ah. Shall we leave it if it's playing up? So Marcus, next slide. Marcus, uh, I next, don't next see slide, please. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. So there's, there's a slightly more clear view of the mountains as, as seen in the video. All the rooms have a certain mountain view. Some have a bit of a panorama extra, but what a, a joy to wake up to such a view. Lovely cup of hot, strong coffee, which is local organic coffee delivered to your room by one of our stewards. Next slide, please. So these are some of the things that we do. We very much focus, it's been a journey. So between us and Tiger Tops and Mountain Travel, can we go back one? Um, we've, we've done the journey from ecotourism, well, actually in Tiger Tops case, we predate even ecotourism, through sustainability, responsible tourism, and now into regenerative tourism. We're, we're independently certified by Travel Life, a global sustainable tourism council affiliate, um, working to, their, to the sustainable tourism council standards. And we've had gold standard audits in 2017 and 2019 in their biannual, biannual audits. We also do an annual verification, testing ourselves against our own standards by a small company called Yardstick UK based in Cornwall, um, and we work with the founder of the company to design this scheme as an online scheme, which is now being sort of opened up to, to new customers and very, very simple online effective system. 
we were the first first uh, standalone property in South Asia to join the uh, United Nations Environment Programme, World Tourism Organization, Global Tourism Plastics Initiative. We, we are aiming to remove all unnecessary plastic by 2022. We have eliminated all um, single-use plastics. The only ones we have are things like kitchen wrap, cling film, and they're all um, compostable by the, the UK Soil Association standards. So, so not so bad. This year, we've actually banned mineral water because we have delicious water from our own well. It's been tested as safe and we don't have the pet water bottles, which is great. Our real challenge is obviously, as always with these things, is to spread the word. So spreading it with the tourism industry is relatively easy, relatively straightforward. And we certainly note Ireland's lead in Europe on, on the removal of plastic shopping bags, for instance. Great, great thing. The problem is in the commercial supply chain and getting wrapping removed there. That's our big challenge, but we're going for it. Next slide, please, Deepesh. Here's some of our community work. This is Harry on the right. He's our, one of our guides and he's our community support partnership program officer. He, he's from the community and he leads on this. And in many ways, it's very much a family affair because the primary school teacher on the left of the screen is one of our staff's uh, our daughters-in-law. So it's a nice family environment. We've mainly focused on local schools and some health related. This is very much community-based and community-led. We don't say what we will do. We listen to what the community wants and say, well, perhaps we can help there or perhaps we can help there. Um, Local environment obviously is vitally important to us. It's important to us morally in terms of environmental protection and commercially to have a beautiful environment for our guests. So we're keen supporters of the community, for community forest user group and we work closely with them and they manage the large areas of forest you saw in the video at the beginning of the video. We particularly do a lot of wildlife monitoring including butterflies as a biodiversity indicator species. Um, we look at the waterfowl counts on the seven lakes in the Pokhara Valley, which are Ramsar sites. Uh, every year we do a, a waterfowl count, which forms part of an international count um, leading up to BirdLife International. We were invited to join the Long Run, who have four Cs. So rather than people, planet and profit, there's our community, culture, conservation and commerce and as they say, probably commerce first, because without the commerce, nothing else really can happen. But working them all together. So back to my idea of conservation for development. And we've sent in our application forms to this prestigious group and we're waiting for our uh, whether we've been accepted or not. But I'm hopeful that we will be. Next slide, please. This is Jit Bader, our head gardener's wonderful selection of organic vegetables and herbs, which we grow in the gardens. We also pilot non-available local vegetables um, or non-available vegetables not available locally, sorry. Um, and once we've got them growing and worked it all out, then we encourage local farmers to produce for us and we buy back so that we add value to the local community, not just in employment. Next slide, please. So we obviously focus on Nepali food and here you have in the background a traditional Nepali tali. And anyone who says that um, Nepalese women are oppressed, I begin to wonder how many husbands get frightened when their wife prangs one of those bronze plates on their heads. But we'll ask BJ about that later. All our sort of supplies as far as possible are, are local and organic. Um, we're also just now, because of the coronavirus, obviously a lot of young, innovative Nepali chefs are back in Nepal. Because sadly, you know, jobs abroad in tourism have also been hit, as Alison said at the beginning. And so we're working with them to create a modern repertoire of, 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 of Nepali cuisine. Uh, next slide, please. So there is, there is a different, lighter, modern uh, version of Nepali food. We were doing this because a lot of guests said it's so delicious, but it's just too much. And, and I certainly know what people feel. Next slide, please. Here's an, another example of a local business partnership. This firm, Lavanya, set up in Kathmandu, um, creates Ayurvedic toiletries 
all pure and natural. Ayurveda is the ancient Indian and South, well, South Asian system of, of um, medicine, herbal medicine, been going for over 6,000 years. And so we work with them and to produce wonderful um, toiletries for our guests. Next slide, please. Then within the lodge, on the left, you see some old wine bottles, which we've relabeled and we use for water when guests are leaving and going, going, to, going on to their next destination. The key of this is, is obviously there's nothing very special about putting water into bottles, but um, is the message on the bottle, which said it's a bit small to see, but we have put a message about say no to plastic um, and please dispose of this bottle wisely at your next destination. We hope that the message will thus spread within the industry. Likewise, mineral wa oh, water bottles for us, for our guests while going on hikes and with us while staying at the lodge. Next slide, please. This is Ishwar Basnet, my great colleague and right-hand man. He leads on our responsible tourism, regenerative tourism efforts. But at the end of the day, next slide, please. It is the staff who make it all happen, of course, and it's a wonderful team effort. Um, they've done more than jump through the hoops and, uh, and done so with such enthusiasm so that I really hand on heart can say we're one of the leading uh, sustainability properties in Nepal and moving to regeneration. Regeneration, what is it? Well, on this journey from ecotourism and before through, regeneration, I would describe, if you describe eco, uh, sustainable tourism as flatlining, you're not adding to the carbon footprint, but you're not taking away from it. You're not damaging the environment, but you're not enhancing it. So old fashioned tourism, degenerative, sustainable tourism, bland neutral, regenerative tourism, regenerating, giving back, adding back, adding back to the environment, community, to the staff in the lodge, and most importantly, to the guests. We really hope, and certainly the feedback would imply, that we're giving back to the guests. The guests actually take an awful lot away with them, both in experiences, and in ideas that can be replicated back home. So, so that, that is really regenerative tourism, although some of the experts don't like me describing it as this, is, is, could be described as a, tour, as a sustainable tourism on steroids. Lovely, next slide, please. So here's what we focus on with the guests. As I say, it's walking, cultural integrity and authenticity, words that of course are bandied about in tourism far too much in many ways but they really do mean things when applied properly in their right context. So on the left here is Harry again, on a walk with a, with a guest. All, it's all local, Harry's from the village. It's all tailored to the guest's interests, as they, whether it's flora and fauna, whether it's a special species they particular birder wants to see, whether it's culture or just plain exercise. Harry and his fellow guides will, will do their best to deliver it. It's also personal. There are no secret text messages going ahead to someone in the village saying, put on the traditional dress, the guests are coming, hide the iPhone. It's all natural. You see the village as it is that day at that time. And, and because of Harry's access to the community as a member, obviously the interchange, the cultural interchange, the experiences that can be had, whether it's going into a local house, having a cup of tea, whether it's um, uh, several of our guests have tried plowing with oxen. I, I hope I'm one of the few, I think, who've plowed with an ox, a horse, and a tractor. So, so, you know, interesting to be able to show these experiences of traditional agriculture as practiced locally. Next slide, please. So here's a conclusion. This is our swimming pool and the mountains reflected in the infinity pool. It's a saltwater pool. So again, good for the environment. That comes to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I was asked to mention obviously the dreaded virus and all the problems that this is giving the world. I actually see it in many ways and BJ has had his ears chewed off by me so many times on this. So sorry, BJ, one last time. Um, it's an opportunity like all crises and disasters, it's also an opportunity. And I think for Nepal, whether rushing headlong for 2 million tourists was actually the right thing, I, I personally perhaps would not entirely agree with that. 
I would be much more interested to look at the yield per tourist, to look at the carrying capacity of Nepal, to look at right tourism at the right time in the right way. And I think this, this seven, eight, however many months it's going to be um, lockdown is a marvelous opportunity actually to, to review the, the tourism paradigm, the tourism setting for Nepal. Uh, and I know that BJ and others are, are very much thinking this way. And let's look at having the best quality tourism, wonderful value at all budget levels, whether you're coming as a backpacker doing a very low budget thing straight out of university or in a gap here, right through to someone, you know, flying in in their private jet. It, it, it really doesn't matter. But delivering excellence at every level is something I, I'm sure most of the industry will wish to strive for. And we can use this time effectively to make those adjustments and those changes. As far as the Tiger Mountain goes, we have a full protocols. We, we have all the, the eco-friendly disinfection. I'm really pleased. We put a lot of work into finding the, those COVID busting yet environment friendly cleaning agents so that we're not uh, harming the environment while yet creating a safe environment for our guests. As I said just before the, to, to the, the organizers, sadly I'm in my rather functional office because it, the good news being that we've got guests upstairs so sadly I can't sit and lounge around up there and show you the marvelous views directly. I think there's wonderful opportunities for Nepal and Ireland here. Ireland has an amazing record on tourism development excellent records on sustainability. Such initiatives have been taken and, and really is one of the European leaders in, in environmental responsibility. And so I, I really hope that the Nepal Island Chamber of Commerce will have that, that element to it. Make sure that's very much one, runs through the warp and weft of all that you do to create really good sustainable links of right tourism, right industry, right trade between, between the two nations because you have a lot in common, a lot of great assets. And I, I think above all, I've never known a Nepali that doesn't enjoy a party, nor an Irishman. Thank you all very much. Namaste. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, that's a very insightful um, talk you have given us. I, I think um, your mantra of uh, conscious luxury travel is, is, a, is a very laudable one. Um, I think you're right in what you're saying now is definitely um, there's an opportunity out there as businesses um, rebuild after COVID to maybe think about going down the sustainable route, if not the regenerative route yet. Um, but I do think going forward, um, it is the way to go. And even with new tourism projects coming on board through the Nepal Investment Board, I think, um, you know, if they do go down and maintain that sustainable route, tourism can be um, much